Hello everyone, welcome back to the home lab. Today I got some boxes and they got fire on them. So they gotta have some good stuff, right? Two 18650 lithium ion batteries. Basically it says don't use them for anything. Could be dangerous. And the other box. Wave Share, that's who I bought it from. Nicely packed, lots of bubble wrap. We got a 8.4 volt wall brick. And this guy, piece of plastic. I know you know what this is because you read the title of the video. Batteries, they go in here, makes a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply for a Raspberry Pi. Now, why is that important? Well, we're gonna tell a little story here. I have a Raspberry Pi that runs my Zigbee and Z-Wave radios for Home Assistant. And usually I have a policy of putting everything on a UPS. Now I only own one UPS, and that means everything gets powered by my PoE network switch because that is connected to the UPS. Unfortunately, that's in the room behind me. And radio reception in a concrete basement is terrible. So I put my radios upstairs in the laundry room. But for reasons, the only network connection I have to the laundry room is over fiber, which doesn't carry power. So every time we have a slight power flicker, we lose Z-Wave and Zigbee, and everyone gets angry because the automated lights don't work. So we used to live without automated lights until we had Home Assistant, and now it's a must have. So to fix that problem, got a little UPS for the Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna set this thing up so that my Z-Wave and Zigbee radios stop rebooting. But today, we are not gonna to go to the laundry room. We are gonna use a Raspberry Pi 4 that I managed to acquire off the internet for a relatively steep price. And we're gonna test this thing out. And I'm gonna write some code to pull data from this. It has a power management chip on it that's supposed to give you some good stuff. And uh, over, over I squared C, we're gonna to try to talk to that thing in Python and have it send data to MQTT so we can log all of the power data in Home Assistant. So in the box, I got the board, the, the UPS hat B. I got a set of standoffs and screws. I got a plastic plate. So the plate goes down, the UPS sits on top of it. This actually sits underneath the pie and it's got a set of pogo pins that stab into the back of it to make connection. It's pretty clever. Batteries that I bought separately go inside and Bob's your uncle. Huh. Maybe I should read the instructions. Tiny Phillips toolkit. Big fan of fixing my own devices. And this is a great toolkit if you fix your own devices. I am not sponsored. I just use this all the time. Hmm. I got flathead screws and buttonhead screws. Which one goes where? You guys don't look like you're countersunk. I'm guessing the flatheads are supposed to go in the plastic. But I didn't read the instructions, so maybe I'm wrong. I can figure this out. Trust me, I'm an engineer with epic skill and epic gear. So my batteries have a little plus on them. Goes with the plus. Nothing blew up. It's probably a good sign. The other one goes backwards. There we go. Now you go. Das. Das good. Then we get little baby standoffs. Little baby standoffs go. That. Raspberry Pi Model 4B. Good luck finding one right now, but. Uh, well, whole project is for a Raspberry Pi, so uh, I'm sorry. Line up the pogo pins. And put the screw in this corner first. One of the pogo pins wasn't seated. That was my mistake. Pi turns on. And uh, I don't have any micro HDMI cables, so we're gonna do this over SSH. Come along for the software. 
So in the software side, we got a file from Waveshare called ina219.py. Basically, this is code that connects to the ina219 sensor that they have on the board over I squared C and reads and writes data from it. So they have some functions here that set up the chip for the current shunt resistors they're using. And there's two different versions of this file. One is for the larger uh, Big Pi hat that uses two 18650s, and they have a different one for the one that uses a single pouch cell for the Pi Zero. And I merged them into one file here. And at the very bottom, it just says if name is main, then do stuff. So basically all it does is it continuously reads the data. So we get the bus voltage, the shunt voltage, which is in millivolts across the shunt, and um, the current and the power. And because of where the chip is situated, the chip is between the batteries and the, volt, the power bus. So 8.4 volts comes in from the barrel jack, and that goes straight to the DC-DC converter for the five volts to the pi. So power coming through the chip is actually power into and out of the battery, not power into and out of the pi. So in theory, if you don't have any batteries plugged in, this should just read zero, zero current and the bus voltage all the time. And so a positive power means power is going into the battery, charging the battery. And a negative power means power is coming out of the battery, discharging. So if we use this as a UPS, we should be able to tell if we're off of wall power by the sign of the current. So if the current goes negative, that means we've lost wall power to some extent. It could be a glitch or something like that. But I, of course, was not happy with this. I want to get this into MQTT so I can log in Home Assistant. So I wrote my own file called wavesharupes.py. And this is designed to run as a systemd service because everything should run as a systemd service. And it loads a configuration file from Etsy where it has an MQTT broker you can configure if you'd like. Um, you can choose if you have the model the A or B, which is the top hat or the bottom hat. I have the bottom hat, which goes with the pogo pins. They also have a version that plugs it on top and goes with female headers. And they have a third version that's for the Pi Zero, specifically that uses one battery cell instead of two. And you can change how fast you want it to update. I, in my case, I defaulted it to 30, but I actually updated 120 seconds. But then if the current changes by more than 0.1 amps or any of these things change by more than this number, it'll send an update immediately and it scans every one second. So it's scanning every second, and if it sees a change in current or voltage, it will send out an update immediately, and if it hasn't seen that change, it'll send it out every 120 seconds, in my case, or 30 if you use the default. We've got some error checking, things like that, setting up the configuration, um, setting up MQTT, setting up a last will and testament so that you can tell if the sensor goes offline, it'll print status as zero. Uh, it just prints everything to the same topic. And by default, it is the path UPS slash the host name of the device. So you get status as zero, and if you have data, then you get status as one plus all this other data. And this all gets sent over MQTT as a JSON encoded blob. And it'll automatically reconnect if you lose MQTT connection, things like that, without having to restart it. I also wrote a quick systemd service file that calls Python assuming you put it in a user local bin, and I wrote an install script that installs all the dependencies through, through apt, and then again through pip, and copies the files into the right place. So all you should have to do to use this on your own, if you want to use it just like me, is to clone my git repo and run the install script. And you don't really have to like compile because it's Python, but the install script will sell everything you need and put it in the right place. Of course, you're welcome to make changes, you're welcome to do things differently if you want, but this is what I did. So I could get the status of my UPS and log it, and I could see when I was losing power enough that it could reset the pie. So here is another one of my favorite programs, MQTT Explorer. So this is showing some data over the past day or so, 16 hours or so of data. And you can see the JSON encoded struct that it publishes says status of one, status goes to zero, if either the program exits normally or if the last will and testament comes into effect. We send the bus voltage, which should be very close to 8.4. The shunt voltage, which if the battery is fully charged, should be extremely close to zero. This is how it calculates current, is from the shunt voltage. Um, the power supply voltage is on the opposite side of the shunt, so we add the shunt voltage back in. So, current, so currently there is 1.3 milliamps going into the battery, so basically zero. 
and there's an equation in the wave shear file that calculates battery percentage. It's not super accurate because it's just based on voltage, but I did that calculation anyway and I publish it and then there's a, a timestamp. Um, but if you see over in this graph here, occasionally the current does go negative by a bit. So usually it's fluctuating around very, very close to zero, but then suddenly it drops down for a little bit and comes back. And so that's probably a power flicker. These are the kinds of things that the Raspberry Pi would probably be able to power through, but they could cause it to lock up if you have a lot of load on it. This Raspberry Pi has no load at all, it's just running itself. There's no hats, there's nothing on USB. It's just Ethernet and keeping the OS running. So if you're more on the marginal side of the power supply, if the power doesn't have very big capacitors or things like that, you can end up where little tiny power fluctuations cause the Pi to lock up. And the hope is, for me, that this WaveShare board will prevent that from happening. And I can see in the data already that it's at least going to do something. But power quality is not great here. So if you head over to my GitHub, there's a link down in the description for this. This is basically the code that I've been running. It's got some basic instructions of how it works. Code's there for you to read, copy, modify as you like. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for coming along on this adventure. Hopefully this improves my reliability of my Raspberry Pi setup. If you guys are using Raspberry Pis for Home Assistant, maybe this will help you too. So uh, yeah, good luck. See you on the next adventure.